Hey guys, DMS here. Today I have for you the Great O Hemp. Let's check it out. Now do me a favor, if you want to see more videos like this, click that subscribe button down below. If you want to support the channel and ask me questions directly, you can on the Telegram chat, or you can get active in the community on Hi-Fi Guides. All right, I'm gonna go and say this now. If you're thinking about buying these, watch the whole video. There's some really important stuff. There's upsides, there's a lot of downsides, but overall, I'm gonna go ahead and spoil it. These are fantastic if you can live with the drawbacks. So let's get into building comfort. Now, this pair was sent over by Garbongo. A long time viewer of the channel, you might remember him from a video a few years ago. Anyway, he did modify this headphone, not as far as sound is concerned, but he added this. This is a 3D printed structure. And if you look back here, you can see the stock cable is actually tucked in and this allows him to have a removable cable on the headphone, which is pretty cool. So this is not a stock piece and this is not the stock cable. Cable is one thing that we will not be talking about. Normally this does not have a detachable cable. Normally the cable is permanently attached. You hear that? That's quality. Uh, so. This headphone is very poorly built. I hate to say it. Um, Grado does not build super fancy feeling headphones. This same plastic piece is the one they use on their super expensive ones and their super cheap headphones. They basically all do this and eventually this mechanism will fall apart. It's just how it is. It's very cheap to fix, very cheap to replace, but this assembly is designed to save money and be simple. Uh, I am glad that they did put an actual leather headband on this model instead of just the plastic one. And the cups are pretty standard Grado. Grado, Grotto, however you say it. I do like the look of the headphones. Um, and I really, really like this pattern. I really don't like these pads though. I'm not really sure how somebody looked at this pad and was like, you know what? That's gonna be comfortable and sound great. I'm sure of it because look how thin this is. Your ear just sits on the driver the whole time you're listening to it. This basically does nothing. It doesn't do anything for the comfort or for the sound, unless you're comparing it to just having no pads on it, in which case, I mean, yeah, I guess the pad is a slight improvement over just setting the wood on my ears. Anyway, you can get these pads on Amazon for like 10 to $13. They are much larger. It is a massive improvement on the comfort and on the sound. And for the rest of this review, I'm going to be reviewing it with these pads on since these are Grado supported pads. And that's pretty much it. This is just, if you get this headphone, this is the way to go. These are the only pads you should be using on it. So these do improve the comfort. It's not perfect. This part of my ears around the top does start to get a little bit smushed in. Doesn't matter if I take these out. Doesn't matter how much I squish my ears in. This will still sit on the side of your head and squish your ears up against your head. That's just how it is. You can wash these pads and make them a little bit softer, and that does help. I do recommend doing something like that. I think Z did a video about it. Either way, look something up before you just do that, figure out a good methodology for it. But this does help with the comfort a lot. Unlike many other Grados, I actually don't have any hot spot pressure on top, which is surprising because there is practically no padding up here. Uh, but the leather is a little bit better than the plastic versions and they're pretty light. I will say there is almost no weight to these headphones. Build isn't great. Comfort is okay. There are certain days where I can wear them for hours. There are certain days where I can only wear them for maybe 40 minutes, but it is a very enjoyable 40 minutes if that's all I can get out of them. And I will 100% suffer through the comfort of these for how wonderful they sound. Grado is a bit of a controversial headphone in the audiophile community. They make a lot of stuff that sounds shouty. They make a lot of things that sound bright. They make headphones that are really expensive and it's just a small focused mid-range band and no bass or treble. It's crazy. They make all kinds of stuff. I did like the SR80E, but these are special. Are they still bright sometimes? Yes. Are they still shouty sometimes? Uh, no, not really. Not unless you're using the stock pads. These larger pads get rid of the shoutiness and exchange it for a bit more upper treble air, energy, brightness, and it improves the bass. But what it really does is gives these an incredible presentation. These can reach into sibilance. Just don't care because they sound so enjoyable. It's weird. <sighs> this on paper, shouldn't sound good. The frequency response shouldn't sound good. The way that 
they can make vocals sound harsh sometimes doesn't doesn't seem like it should sound good. It doesn't seem like it should sound good. Think, oh, sibilance, that's gonna be harsh. It's not gonna sound good. But these headphones, when I listen to music on them, send chills down my spine. Piano sounds about as natural as it does on anything. It sounds like it does when I'm in the room with it. And not just tonally, not just the timbre, but also in the staging. These have phenomenal staging. Um, not in everything. Vocals can be pretty close. Certain instruments can be very tight in, but there are sounds that I've heard through these that far surpass the extents of even what my HD800S can do in terms of staging, which is ridiculous, and it only happens with these pads on the headphone. I was talking to Z-Reviews about this, and we kind of came to the same conclusion that this is like the audiophile headphone. It's the most audiophile-y audiophile headphone that I know of. It's not a headphone for someone in a recording studio. It's not a headphone for someone who's looking for maximum accuracy because in those two fields, it will fall very, very short. But if you are just, you got a record player, you just love the sound of live instruments, if you're a speaker guy, I think that's what these are. This is a headphone for speaker guys. Everything about listening to these reminds me of when I had the Ohm Walsh 3000s in my living room. And I would say it's that sound but with more treble. These are like Ohm Walsh speakers with more treble. They're not crazy impressive in terms of technicality. You can blow your mind with the detail. The separation is fantastic. The staging is fantastic. You can pick out an instrument really easily and focus on it. And it's not to say the detail is bad because it isn't. They're like little speakers. I guess because they are little speakers. This is very much the audiophile experience encapsulated into a headphone. And I'm gonna have trouble putting these on my ranking list because I'm gonna have to just make a separate row and say, they're not built good. The tuning is not very flat. They're not that comfortable, but they go near the top of this list. The exception to the rule, the audiophile headphone. Now, this person, Garbongo, he got this with a balance connector. Garbongo, you don't need a balance connector with this headphone because you can power these on damn near anything. They're very easy to drive. If I plugged them up to anything I had here balanced, I could barely touch the knob before it was just far too loud. So I use these with a quarter inch adapter and had them plugged into most amps on low gain. They do benefit some from tubes. However, having a tube amp that can run with this low of impedance is a bit of a challenge. It worked okay on the little dot mark too. The dark voice didn't like these very much. There's probably some tubes out there that could calm down the treble a little bit more. But truth be told, I would just plug them up to a solid state amp and be perfectly happy with it. Every song I play, it doesn't matter if it's a good recording or a bad recording, I would enjoy on these. I would just put them on and just be right in the music. And I guess that's what a lot of us are after. You might be the kind of person who's chasing detail. You might be the kind of person who's chasing a very specific sound. And if that's the case, these probably aren't for you. Technicality is number one. And I have other headphones in my collection that are all about technicality. Those are music, you know? These are music. If you love music and don't care about any of that stuff, this is probably the headphone for you if you can deal with the downsides. I'm gonna be honest, if I didn't just have an ambulance bill come in, I would be buying these. And it kills me that I'm not gonna be able to buy these right now. I hope that I can get a set before they're gone because this is a limited edition headphone according to Grado's website. So maybe I'll be able to buy a set of my own Maybe I won't, but I hope they make another headphone like this. Because as of this moment, this is the best thing that Grado makes to my knowledge. Out of all the other things I've tried, and I haven't tried everything they make, but I've tried a lot of them. This is my favorite Grado. And one of my favorite headphones, even for all of its flaws. And that's that. I have this headphone, I have these pads linked in the video description if you guys want to check either of them out. So I'm going to wrap this video up there. Guys, if you liked it, please leave a like down below, a comment letting me know what you want to see in the future. If you want to get active in the community, you can at forum.hifiguides.com. As always, don't forget to stick around, subscribe for more videos like this. Till the next one, guys. Peace.